Welcome back to Acing AP Biology. As we continue on in Unit 7, in this video, we will go over the first two stages of cellular respiration, glycolysis and pyruvate oxidation. Glycolysis is the most ancient metabolic pathway. It is anaerobic, meaning that it does not require oxygen. Therefore, primeval bacteria living on ancient Earth with no oxygen used glycolysis for ATP production. It takes place in the cytosol. In this process, ATP is produced through substrate-level phosphorylation. You may recall from the last video that substrate-level phosphorylation is the production of ATP without the use of the electron transport chain. Glycolysis involves the partial oxidation of glucose, as four hydrogens are stripped off the glucose and eight remain on the glucose. Each step in glycolysis is catalyzed by a specific enzyme. For instance, phosphofructokinase regulates the third step of glycolysis and mediates the rate of the overall process. Now let's go into the process of glycolysis. Glycolysis can be divided into two stages, the energy investment phase and the energy yielding phase. Each phase occurs in five steps. The process starts with glucose, a C6 compound, meaning that it has six carbons. Two ATP molecules are invested here, and the glucose is broken into two C3 compounds. Both compounds are then phosphorylated with the two inorganic phosphates from the initial investment of ATP. Then we enter the energy yielding phase. Here, the inorganic phosphates are released from the C3 compounds and combined with ADP to form ATP. So, four ATP molecules are produced in total. Then, finally, two pyruvate molecules are produced. These molecules are high energy. In the process, four hydrogen atoms are lost. The electrons lost by the pyruvate are picked up by NAD plus along with four protons. And as a result, two NADH molecules are produced. The two NADH molecules travel to the electron transport chain for the final stage of cellular respiration. Remember that in glycolysis, pyruvate molecules are oxidized and NAD plus is reduced to NADH. The net products from the reaction are the two pyruvate molecules and two water molecules produced from glucose. Four ATP are produced, but two ATP are used up, so there is a net total of two ATP produced in this process through substrate level phosphorylation. Two NAD plus are invested and two NADH molecules are produced along with two protons. Now let's move on to pyruvate oxidation. Pyruvate oxidation occurs in the mitochondrial matrix and it happens with both pyruvate molecules. Both pyruvate molecules are converted to acetyl-CoA. The process starts as pyruvate enters the mitochondrial matrix from the cytosol. Once it enters, it is converted to acetate, which is a two-carbon compound. Therefore, one carbon is lost through carbon dioxide along with the loss of two electrons picked up by NAD+, forming NADH. The NADH goes to the electron transport chain. Acetate is not very reactive, so to make it reactive, CoA is added to form acetyl-CoA, which is highly unstable and reactive. 
This compound then enters the citric acid cycle, the next stage of cellular respiration. Keep in mind that this process occurs twice because there are two pyruvate molecules coming from glycolysis. The final products of this process are two acetyl-CoA molecules, two CO2 molecules, and two NADH molecules. Again, this is because there are two pyruvate molecules to begin with. That's it for this video. In the next lesson, we will go over the citric acid cycle. See you then. For more bio content, hit subscribe.